What's been going on around the soul? What's going on around the soul? Why do we need a soul? What is the reality around us? This is where it gets intense. So in, in, in Hebrew, when we say the word Hashem, right? When we say the word Hashem, we, the word Hashem is Ha, which is the, right? Ha, and then Shem, which is name. The name. That's what the people are like, oh God, you know, Hashem, the Almighty. But what are we saying? We're saying that we have no recollection of being able to understand the full capacity of this expression of God. We have no, like, you know, we don't have anything that that could allow us to conceptualize the vastity of the creator of Hashem. All we know about Hashem is the attributes that we've experienced with Hashem. Is this, is this working too? Okay. This, the aspects of Hashem that, that we experience in this everyday reality. So Hashem is this idea of saying like, hey, you know what? Hashem. What is Hashem? The name. So what does it mean, the name? Something that's beyond our logic that we can't even put, we don't have a finite name to. We're just saying it exists and everything comes from this source. Whatever the vastity of it is, we'll never understand, but we know everything that exists comes from the source is the idea of Echad, right? So this is the creator. So how does the Arizal explain it? Or how does the Zohar, how do the Kabbalists, because I got a Kabbalistic Yeshiva, uh, Kabbalist Yeshiva, I have a Kabbalistic Sidur, and this Kabbalistic Sidur is doing what? Giving us the knowledge of Kabbalah. But so this is the thing. So this is the point. So we have the five levels of the soul. We accepted that. Now, we're going to go a little bit further. What is a little bit further? How do we understand this idea of God? This idea of God, the way that the Kabbalists refer to it, Rabbi Shimon, the Ariza, the Ramchal, the Ramach, all these amazing people, they explain it to this idea called the Ein Sof. The Ein Sof. What is the Ein Sof? So what does the Ein, the Ein Sof mean? It literally means like basically endless. Right? He's beyond our comprehension. No end. That's what Ein Sof means. No end. Ein. No. Sof. Sof. And sof. That's the endless world. This is how we understand God. The idea that the world is endless and it goes beyond comprehension. It just keeps going. We can't imagine it. They call it, this is the Ain Sof. And so now we're going to understand a huge idea. We're going to learn about creation. I'm just giving it to you. It's right here. It's right in front of you. We're just, it was very simple. It's like we talked about, <laughs> we started off about the indoctrination of the world and how that's not really the true us and how we've been like and how we've been like you know living this reality of 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 this world that we live in versus asking what is our truth right my mom's she's a professor you know she always says not into the graduate school level do, is a student ever really required to talk about what they think right hopefully education is advancing but the point is to say in school you, what you think doesn't matter it's what someone else said. You just judge from how well you articulate that. It's like the same idea, like how we perceive ourselves, how we perceive ourselves, and what we're told determines what we, how we express the desires that we have within, within ourselves, right? That's it. That's reality. And so we're saying like, okay, so that's not the true reality. What is the true reality? The true reality is that in order for us to have a fulfilled life, we have to, our body and our soul have to be filled up with light. And so we talked about the four levels of the soul, the five levels of the soul, and how they function with each other. And then now we're going to the next level, which is this idea of the Ain Sof, which is the endless world. It's the endless world. It's, 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 it's our way of expressing Hashem and how endless and how vast and how beyond our imagination it is. And we can't grasp this because we so we call it the Ain Sof. There's no end. That's, that's what they say about it. And so this endless world, this endless world, for whatever reason, Okay, we're going into high level territory, right? It's like the example that's used is like if you want to think about the ink soft, right? Like imagine a child that's inside of a room, right? It says if you think this is an analogy that's given in this in this in this in the safer. If a child were enclosed in a room all his life and he would think 
that everything outside of this room is endless. When he finally goes outside, he'll realize that the city does have boundaries, but he, but, but he imagines the city outside of the city outside the city is endless. So he said, in order to understand that, or it, uh, our understanding is by definition giving the concept of end self limitation, and the whole idea of the concept of the end self is that there are no limitations. So by giving it a name, we create a limitation on it. After we get, after we get to the limit of our understanding, from there onward, the concept of the Ain Sof takes place indefinitely. So the point is just saying, like you know, it's there, it's out there, it's this endless reality, and in this reality, like how can you explain such an idea? So imagine, so imagine, you have a you have a you have a whole like lake, right? And his lake is just like beaming the sun, reflecting the sun. It's like this beautiful thing. This lake is, you know, you see some of these lakes, you know, in like Midwest, South. I don't know, I'm from LA, you know, we didn't have so many lakes out there. But the point is the same. We had rivers. But the point is the same that you see some beautiful lake reflecting the, the, the light that's coming from the sun. But there's a particular place of that ocean that the sun is reflecting on, a part of that area is dark. And what do they call this idea? They call it the simsoon. The simsoon. What is the simsoon? The simsoon is the simsoon is the is 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 a part of it says it says the simsoon is a process of contraction, meaning that like if there was endless light, there's a part of it that was given this cloak of darkness. In that the in self is removed to create is removed to create a void so that this endless reality that exists that we call God there's an aspect of like God if you can imagine like God taking an aspect of, 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 of his expression just beyond logic ideas taking and, and putting like a cloak over it and from this cloak of the dimming of God's light he says within this void because he's calling this dark light this dark experience Within this void, the whole process of it, it, within this void, the whole process of creation, and all of the spheres, everything that exists that expresses God, takes place in this process of simsun, which is like literally the cloaking, the cloaking of of God's light. And this cloaking of God's light is what? Think about it. You have a simsun, which is God's light being cloaked. The Torah starts with what? Let there be light. Why did there need to be light? Why wasn't God's light there already? Right? God's light wasn't there already because everything was dark from the Simpson. So the idea of the idea of light that exists in this cloak that the endless reality created, this cloak, this idea is being expressed. How? Because you're saying that there was this this Simpson that created a, a cloak over God's light, and then what happens left? Next is this is the beginning of creation. This is the beginning of creation. And you know the thing about the Kabbalah? The Kabbalah starts before the physical things in creation were made. Right? Before the physical things in, in, in creation were made, this is where the Kabbalah starts. It doesn't, I mean, obviously it goes into that as well, the physical creations. But before that, it talks about the light. And it says that this, 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 this idea that Hashem cloaked himself and, and, and hid himself and, 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 and created this reality of darkness, then Hashem brought a light into this world and this light that Hashem brought into this world is was acting, they call it the Kav, right? And the Kav is kind of like this pipeline from this endless world that comes into this world and brings God's light into this world, right? And so out of this light that comes into the world, there's four worlds, four dimensions, right? And again, back to the Parsha. Re hey, see! We're literally saying that there's more to see in life. There's more, to, there's more to connect to in life. That's what we're saying. We're saying that there's more to connect to. There's more happening around us. The reality that we grew up with is not necessarily the reality that connects us to our greatness. In order to connect to our greatness, we have to fill our both our body and our soul. So we're literally talking about the body and the soul. That's what we're talking about right now. And so now we're saying that not only do we have a soul that has five different parts, 
that soul is reflective in this reality that's governed by four worlds. So you're not just living in one world. Like on a physical level, yes. But just like you have different levels to the soul, so do those souls correspond. Those different levels of the, the soul correspond to these different realities that you're living in at the same time. I already made a brock on this, so I don't need to do it again, but we just got to reflect on this idea. L'chaim, l'chaim. Maybe it's coffee, maybe it's water, something else. Anyways, so the point is like this, because I didn't have to do a bracha. Why? Because I did one before I got on uh, live. All right, so this is the point. So this is the thing. So it's like this. Um, we, have, we have five parts of our soul. That soul is reflective of four different I mean, is this too much? Is this too much? Because we got to go to this place. If we're going to recreate our thinking, and we're going to recreate our way to connect to our ultimate greatness, if we're going to take advantage of all the economic opportunities that exist in this new world that's being created right in front of us, we need new thoughts. We need new ideas, and we need to put them out there. So anyways, like this. So these parts of the world, these different stages of existence, we're experiencing it all at the same time. I know it sounds weird. Like, how do you make sense of that? How are you saying, Morka? How are you saying that we're experiencing life in different dimensions at the same time? What could what could even be a reality to that, right? So imagine like this: you're on a plane, and you're in your own private jet, right? And so you have to go within the next like two days. You have to visit like five or six states, right? So you visit five or six states. Each state, each state that you go to has different weather, right? Some is rainy, some is windy, some is really hot, some is snowing, different things, right? I mean, whatever, how these states work, but just imagine it, imagination. So we go through these different states, right? You go to these different states, you experience different types of weathers. So it means that all this weather is happening at the same time. It's just a matter of where you physically go to that determines what you experience. But the weather is happening around you all the time. You just may not be able to experience the snow because you're in a state where it's actually very windy, right? Or you may not be able to experience the wind because you're in a part that's raining, right? That's what, that's what you're dealing with. And so that's the energy that exists around you all the time. But based off of where you're traveling to, you're able to experience that. So it's the same way with the soul. Right? There's different aspects of our soul, but if we don't know that there's different aspects to our soul, we're not going to know where to elevate to to be able to make the connection. Right? To inspire, to connect, to achieve our goals, our destiny, the whole thing. So that 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 idea is what we're holding at, right? And so the point is the same that in the same way that we have different parts of our souls, there's different realities that we're experiencing in. In the same way you have to travel to be able to experience these, like say if you wanted to, if you traveled in a few different states, you could experience a different type of weather, different experience, but the weather is happening whether you're there or not. You're just able to experience it because you travel there. So with our minds, we can observe our different levels of our soul, which connect us to these different, these four different realities that exist around us all the time. And then from there, from there, we make connections. Right? And these connections that we can make between our soul and the reality that we're experiencing every day in life, that experience is the quality, quality of life that we have every day. This connection, this connection of what our soul needs and the world that we, the worlds that, that, that we're experiencing, even on a subconscious level around us, those things, those connections determine our quality of life. This is a huge concept. It's like a huge concept because before all we were talking about in terms of our life I want to be successful I want to go to this college I want to learn these school these skills I want to get this job and then I want to make this amount of money and then I can live in this type of a neighborhood and I could send my kids to these type of schools and I can marry this type of a woman or marry this type of a man and I can have this reality and you know what most people that you gave a billion dollars to today right so you just go to somebody and you say you know what here's a billion dollars so say you give someone a billion dollars almost everything that they're going to do is influenced by is influenced by what they've seen on television 
They're going to go out and buy cars. They're going to go out and buy houses. They're going to go out and travel first class. They're going to go out and do it. And then all the ideas that they got from society are connected to perpetuating a workforce. Right? We talked about it in the beginning. So that's the reality. So now I'm saying, no, there's actually a different reality. There's a reality that involves the body's desires and your soul's desires. Both of those things are together. That's who you are. That's the connection. Right? And that's the idea. Right? So the point is, is to say that by connecting these ideas together, right? By connecting these ideas together, we actually give ourselves the energy, the outlook, the re hey! the ability to see. And so we'll be able to, we'll be able to, 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 to see what we need to take our lives and what type of tools we need to actually get to where we're going. And that's why the people religious are going to love me for this. So anyways, it's like this. So what's the point? So these different worlds, this is how they work. Because what we're saying is, is like every single action that we do, every single action that we do, this, these actions that we do literally determine our experiences. So I'm going to explain it like this, right? So I'm going to start with, I'm going to, I'm going to go in English and I'm going to go back in Hebrew. Whatever. We're going to have fun. So these are these worlds, right? So we, just, we, we understood that there is a soul and this soul has five different parts to it, right? We're talking heavy stuff, I know, but we're going to get somewhere great. It has five parts to it. And not only that, the endless reality that we live in, right, that we call the Ain Soft, this endless reality, for whatever reason, we're not going this deep. I don't have the answer for it anyways. But God cloaked part of itself, and that cloak is called the Sensun. And that Sensun, that darkness is the beginning of the, a new a, a light that was created. And that light that was created is broken down into four worlds. Really five, but we're only going to focus on four of them. That's what we're saying. This is where we're at right now. And you can say it's broken into five worlds. Okay, fine, five worlds. We're going to go there. I don't want to fully go there because it's like it's intense stuff. But the point is like this. These five worlds that we have is literally how God's light comes into this world. God's light comes into this world through these five the, through these five experiences that we're calling five worlds until it reaches our bottom of our soul, which is that is the nephesh. This is how reality works. This is this is this is the true reality. I'm giving you the true reality right now. Period. L'chaim. L'chaim. <laughs> it's hard out here. Is it coffee? Is it water? What is it? What is he? You're never gonna know. So it's like this. The point is like this. You have a soul. How does that soul receive light? Oh, God, if you haven't answered yourself this question, this is like, you got to ask yourself, what have you been doing your whole life? What have you been doing? You haven't been asking how do you feel your soul? You know you have a soul. My soul, I'm just not feeling it. You've said that before. So why don't you think about what your soul needs on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, period? What does it need? It's in five parts. We're talking about it. And not only that, the aspects of the soul that we experience is, is the reality that we experience internally, externally. The reality on the outside is, what is, is literally a reflection of our soul. So if our soul isn't receiving light, if our soul isn't receiving light, then you know what? The world that you live in isn't receiving light either. Ah! This is what's going on. If you're not receiving light, you're, the worlds that you experience are not going to have any light either. Dismal, empty, depressed, sad. That's what we're saying is that's the byproduct. So we have a soul, we have a body. We establish that. The body has needs, so the soul has needs too. That's why it's in this world. So the question is, how do we fill the soul? I know how to fill the body. I can keep having the water, the coffee, whatever this is, and I can keep doing that, and I can fill my body, and I can have a nice hamburger, you know, I can have this, you know, I can hang out with my wife, all these amazing things, great. But at a soul level, 
on a soul level, what do I need? And where do I go to get the information for the soul? And that's what we're trying to figure out right now. Because if we're saying if the soul expresses itself in a physical reality in five, five different worlds, and these five different worlds is how the life force of the creator comes down into this world, oh God, I'm giving you amazing stuff. I'm not even going to say anything. Anyways, I'm just going to keep sharing. But this is the point, okay? This is the point. The point is the saying the life force of God comes into this world in five different phases. And these five different phases correspond to the five dimensions of your soul. And the amount of this light that you receive in your life determines the world that you have around you. So what is the first level? The first level is Adam Kedmon, which is expressed is primordial, primordial man. Primordial man. The non-physical expression of mankind. Pure light. Pure light that's coming down in a vessel. It's not the endless world. It's when the endless world comes and it, and it starts to put itself into a vase. You know, it starts coming down inside of a vase into a body. And that body is Adam Kedmon. High level stuff, but we're going to keep moving past it. We're going to keep going because we got to bring the Google for humanity. That's what we're holding up. So Adam Kedmon, we're not going to go into super details because I know we've been going for a while. Right? And I want you to reflect on these ideas because if you want to be great, this is how we get there. If you want to, if you want to go the, 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 the systems route, shkoech. Great. How well has it worked for you this far? We're talking about God's reality. We're trying to get to God's reality, what God sees for us. We're not concerned with, you know, um, this idea of, um, this idea of um, popular opinion. We're here to say, I got one life to live. I have so many years in my life, and I got to achieve my ultimate potential. Because guess what? I'm going to say something scary. This is scary. I got to say it. I was debating, I should have said it earlier, but I'm saying it now. There's a Gemara. The Gemara. There's a Gemara that says that it doesn't matter how much a person accomplishes in life, if they don't accomplish the things that they came into this world to accomplish, it's as if their life was like pointless. So that means you could be a multimillionaire, you have a humongous house, you can give yourself the nickname P. Diddy. I'm not talking about P. Diddy, I'm just saying you use the name. Right, because there are P. Diddy's that are out there. We all know who they are. I mean, maybe not. But the point is the same. I could name myself P. Diddy. I could do business. I could make a lot of money. Everybody loves me. I have parties. I dance. I wear leather outfits. And you know what? That's what I do. Right? And I'm wealthy. But you know what? Maybe that's not what God brought me into this world for. And maybe the influences of the world took the desires that God gave to me and pushed them in a direction that didn't connect me to my purpose. And that's what we got to ask ourselves. Wait, God gave me desires when I came into this world. Are those desires connected to what God, what I'm doing now in my life? Is it connected to what God has given, has, 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 has said that I was supposed to accomplish in this lifetime? Are they connected? And if they're not connected, what can I do? Because I don't want to live a lifetime of doing things that aren't connected to God's will. God has a plan for me. God says this works. God says this is how you achieve your greatness, your shlamus in this world. This is how you do it. So the question is like this. What does God have planned for me? Because if I don't do what God has planned for me, not only that, okay, part two. Part two, what's the point? The next world. The next world, they say what happens is and I'm not trying to scare anybody, but if you don't accomplish your purpose, they use this idea that the, 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 our sages, our, our, our sages currently now are going off in the same Gemara, and he said, imagine you go to a movie theater, and you watch this movie of your entire life, of the person you were supposed to become, the mitzvahs you're supposed to do, and the, the level of greatness you're supposed to accomplish. You are, you're watching this movie, sitting in the theater, and you see all the things that you're supposed to do. Then that movie's over. Then it shows you the movie of actually how you lived. And not only does it show you the movie of how you lived, it says like this. When you leave this world, you get, you go, you, 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 you experience the pain of all the people in that first movie 
that did not experience the light that you were supposed to bring to them. So say a person had, in this lifetime, they were supposed to go a certain way in life, and they were supposed to start some organization and feed, like, say, a million people, right? But something happened in their life, and they end up going a different way, and they never achieve that. They never did that. Even though they, they may have made billions of dollars and have achieved success, but their whole purpose in life was to be able to feed a million people for whatever reason in different ways around the world. That was an organization, but they never built that organization. They said, because that was part of your destiny in the next world, when you get to the next world, Hashem, you're gonna, that pain of all those people that never received the meals that you were supposed to give to them, living your right, the, the, light you're, the life you're supposed to live, you feel that pain in the next world. And that goes for anybody. Any joy that we were supposed to bring to the world that we did not bring to the world, that joy that we not bring to the world that we're supposed to bring to the world becomes pain for us. So if you have a talent and you have a gift and you have abilities and you're not using it, I don't know what your life is going to look like after 120. It may not be pretty. Lahaim. Is it water? Is it tea? I don't know. Is it coffee? But the point is like this. That's the world to come. If we don't fulfill our purpose in this lifetime, whether you have to keep seven B'nai Noah, whether you have to keep 613 mitzvahs, whatever it is, if you don't fulfill your purpose in this world, you're going to suffer into the next life. Period. You got to think about that. That's like a big concept. That means like even, like, like even I got to ask myself, like, you know, I'm here, I'm speaking, this whole thing, right? A super big keeper. It's like that's going on, but then I gotta ask myself: Is this is this the truth? Is this exactly what I should be doing? It looks like it, but I'm saying I still have to be honest. I have to be pure within myself to say that I don't know, but I'm just pushing forward. And I'm just doing what I think I'm supposed to do because I'm supposed to do the Ratzon of Hashem, which is like to bring His name, to bring honor to His name to the poor world. So I want to teach Torah to be a part of that. It made more people get involved in it, and they start teaching, and they help people as well through the wisdom of the Torah. But the point is, it's saying that this is what we're up against, right? This is what we're dealing with. And so what we're dealing with is reevaluating life and reevaluating where my goals should be. Because if we're saying that we live in four different worlds, right? And this top world, this, this world is the world. Okay, what I'm going to say right now, this is it. This is the game changer right now. This is the game changer. I just had a pre I was gonna tell you something, I just wanna put a precursor on it so you have appreciation. So this is a game changer. This is how the system works. So we have a world of what they call Asiya, right? In this world of Asiya, this the light force of God that's coming from this endless world filters into this world of Asiya, right? And this world of Asiya is right below Adam Kedmon, right? So all uh, the world of Asiya, the world of Adam Kedmon, the light force is just drawing down into this world. It's coming down into this world. And at this level of Asiya, all the light that comes down through Adam Kedmon, which is just pure light, becomes organized, but it's still a different aspect of pure light. And this pure light that's coming down into this world comes down and it comes to this idea of called Bria. And now Bria is received. Received energy from Adam Kadmon in the world of Absolute. The world of Bria comes down. The energy the energy comes through Bria, that light force that comes through the Asila, uh, I mean, uh, it comes through Absolute, Absolute, that comes down through the world of Absolute, that world, that pure light comes into Bria and it starts to like separate itself. It starts to become different entities. It becomes part of this world of creation, right? So it's like you have a, you have light that comes in, right? And you say you have one of these kaleidoscopes. So you have this light, this pure light that comes in, but then it hits, then it hits this world of absolute, and then so now it's going through this kind of like tunnel process. You have light from the outside, now you have this tunnel process, and this tunnel process leads to this world called Bria. And when it goes through Bria like a kaleidoscope, that light turns into many different types of lights. But it's coming from the same light. It's coming from the same light. He explains lights. The what? He explains lights. Yeah, yeah. So in the, so it's like, it's like, for example, 
if you can see the essence, like Adam, Adam, the first man, Adam, it says Adam gave name to all of creation, right? He gave names to all of creation, and those names that he gave to creation actualized those entities, like tree, I mean, not, not tree, I think animals they talk about, you know, so like lion and bear and ant and whatever, you know, these types of things. And so the point is just saying that the essence of all those animals all come from the same source, right? So the process of this, 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 all these animals having different names is a process of that original light that's con totally connected being spread into all these different multiples. And this is the level of Bria. Bria comes from Atzilut, and it comes, Atzilut is pure light, and when it comes into Bria, it, it, it expresses itself in all these different unique ways. And so this is where the, the level of the, the, the Sfirot and all these other different things, you know, uh, uh, start to come into reality. We're not going into that right now, but this is the point. The point is the same. When this light comes into the world of Bria, when it comes into the world of Bria, it, it becomes it becomes separated. You can still, you know, you, you can still you, you, it's separate from the 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 endless light, which is the Ain Sof. It's separate from that, from the standpoint that now it's it's it, it becomes these different like isolated pieces, right? And so we go to, to another level with the the the, the world of Yitzira. And so it says at this level there are spiritual beings that are highly elevated, though there are there is an enormous amount of godly revelation. There's still plenty of concealment. So in the same way that that pure light that came into the world from Atzilut comes into the world and becomes fragments in Bria, which is the physical creation we have around us, like the plants, the trees, the lights, all this whole thing. Everything originally comes from pure light. That's through Atzilut, which is a byproduct of Adam Kedmon. And then now it comes into the world of Yitzira, which is the level of Yitzira, which is the, the, the more physical aspect. Not completely physical, but more physical aspects of the physical reality, right? So like if you looked at like a, a plant, for example, right? Inside that plant is molecules, and those molecules form and create matter, right? And, and it's like these, these different ex expressions of this plant come from this essence of, like, say, molecules, right? And these molecules are express expression of light, right? M light in the physical form, right? And so this light, that's light, that becomes molecules, so the light itself is absolute. The molecules itself, you could say, is like a Bria, and then the physical expressions of those molecules, you can say is the world of Yitzira, right? The, but the, even this physical aspect, even this physical expression from Bria is still the internal aspect of this entity. So like when we say like with a, 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 a tree or whatever, right? So the internal element, the ultimate level of this tree is light from God, right? It's an aspect of the creator. Right, it's coming through. Right, so this life force of the Creator is coming into this reality, and then this reality is is being expressed through Bria, which creates all these different physical entities, and then each of these physical entities that exist in the world has an internal essence, right? And this internal essence is called Yitzira, right? And this internal essence is like you could say like the scientific part of the the entity we're talking about. So if we're talking about trees, we're talking about the internal aspect of of the tree, which you will learn in the science book. Right? And so the external part of that tree is the world of Atsia. Right? The world of Atsia. No no. Atsia. 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 Right? That's that's the thank you. And so that that's the part of the world, the physical world that is the external part of all of creation. So that's the most physical part, right? Atsia is like the most physical expression. The world of uh, Yitzira, or the internal essence of physicality. Bria is the life force of God being disseminated into all these different creations. And then the world above that is Atsilut, which is a life force of God coming down into this world in an undifferentiated form. And so these are the worlds that we experience. And guess what? The world of Asiya that we just talked about is connected to our nefesh. And the world of Yitzira is connected to the Ruach of our soul, right? We talked about the soul. And, the, and, 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 and Bria is, is connected to the world of Neshama, right? We talked about the Neshama. And the, 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 
the 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 absolute, which is that pure light, comes from the world of Chaya. Chaya, Chaya, the world of Chaya. Sorry, not Chaya. Chaya. In in the world above that is Yechida, which is Adam Kadmon. And so, in the same way that we have these different parts of our soul, and those different parts of our soul ex- it allows experience the world that we're living in. It's a different reality in terms of us thinking about reaching our potential. Because we're saying we have to fill our soul with God's light in order to achieve our ultimate potential. That's what we're here for. We're here to experience God's light. And by having God's light, boom, we project it into the world. And as we project it into the world, that's, that's, that's the world that we ultimately experience on a day-in-day basis. And so what we're saying is like this. My soul needs light. How do I get this light? And this is where we're going to end it off on this. How do I get this light? How many minutes are we in? Oh, okay, we're good. So how do I receive this light? And where does this light go? And how does this light affect my reality? Yeah, thank you. How, do, how does my, my soul affect, how does this light from my soul affect this reality? Right? So this is the thing. I'm going to give English words to these different these worlds. So the world of Atsia, which is the physical world, Asiya, which is the lowest level of the physical world, that world is the world of action. That's the world that we live in right now. That's the world that when we move around, we're looking around, whatever, we're looking at the lowest part of the world, and that's the physical world. That's the physical of the physical world. Like you could go and meet people, why are people say racist or discriminatory? Because they're just looking at the external part of the person. So that idea of discrimination should remind us of that we live in the lowest world, which is all about the external of the physicality. And then we have a world above that, which is called the world of Yetzira. And you know what? They call it the world of formations, right? You know what the Kabbalists say? Not only is it the world of formation, it's the world where angels exist. Uh, where is it? But I'm saying, but this is a world where angels are created in the world of formation, right? And you have a world above that, which is the which is the which is the world of of the world of Bria. And this world of Bria is where ideas and emotions are created. So you have a physical world that you live in, which is the world of Asia, and you have a world above that, which is the world of Yitzira which is a world where all the angels are created. So your physical actions that you do in this world create an angel in the world of Yitzira, the world of, fo- of, of formation, right? That's, that's, you're creating angels out there by your physical actions. And the w- angels that you create go up to the world of, 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 of Bria. And this world of Bria is, is the world where ideas and emotions are created and literally these angels go based off of your actions in this world they go to the world of formation and they, they're created in the world of formation this angel so like say god forbid a person does something negative they create a negative angel in the world of formation and this world of formation goes all the way up to the world of bria which is the world of ideas it's a world of creation it's a world of ideas and emotions Right, so every I, this angel goes up there and it brings takes on one hand an uh, idea and another I, in another hand an uh, uh, um, an emotion, and it brings that idea and emotion because that idea and emotion comes from a world that's above that, which is which is the world of Yitzira. I mean, uh, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that that world of sorry, wait, it's right in front of me. I apologize. So yeah, so that world above Bria is the world of absolute, right? Yeah. And, and so and so that world of absolute is the world of emanation. So it's just bringing down pure light. That light that comes down goes into the world of Bria, which is a world of creation. And in the world of creation, below that is the world of angels. And then the world below the world of angels is you, where you're at. So the, the things that you do in the physical world and this is all the uh, Rabbi Isaac Luria. None of this is my own. I have none of this logic. I'm just reading to you literally what's right in front of you. You got to get the Sidur. You can get it. 
It's great. It's amazing. Woo. And so the point is to say that this world, this world of, of, of action that we live in, the world of Asiya, literally influences all the world. So our actions influence the whole world. Our actions influence the whole world. So what we do in the world of Asiya, the physical world, literally creates an angel. And this angel goes up to the, uh, is created in the world of Yitzira. And that angel in Yitzira goes up to the world of Bria. And it takes an idea and an emotion that stems from the world of Asalut. And then that angel brings that, that idea and emotion down to you and injects it into your brain. That's what it said. Mitzvah Mekhaiz, it brings another mitzvah. Avera brings another Avera. Why? Because everything that you do creates an angel that goes up to the world of creation and brings that down to you. So if you're getting depressed, and I know people get upset about this, if people get up de depressed, if people have different issues, if people get angry, it's because of an angel bringing you down you an idea and emotion, and it's based off of your actions that you do in your everyday life. That's reality. Ray, hey, let's see. Are we seeing right now? Are we seeing a new, new reality? Because before we were just talking about the workforce and, and, and having dreams and the world interpreting them and now I'm saying, nope, there's another reality, which is we have to fill our souls in order to achieve our total potential and to be able to do our what we're supposed to do in this lifetime. That's what we're holding at, right? That's what we're holding at right now. And so the point is, is to say that in order to understand what we're supposed to accomplish, first we have to understand what we're up against, which is the other ideas that we've been given our whole life. And then now, once we understand what we're up against, we can see, okay, what's the truth then? What is the direction we need to go in? And that's where the idea that we have a soul that needs the life force of Hashem, and the soul has five different dimensions. And not only does the soul have five different dimensions, what expresses the soul out into the world, right? Like, for example, in the 10th spheros, right? You have, I mean, or in the 7th spheros, in zero, well, the 7th spheros, you say, you have Hesed, Gevor, Teferi, right? And then you have Netzachot, Yesod, right? And then you have Malchut. But the, the sages tell us that Hesed, Gevor, and, and Teferi are expressed in Netzachot and Yesod. So you have the light force and you have its expression. And then everything manifests in Malchut. But the point is just saying that we can understand this reality that, you know what, there's, there's the light force, and it's how that light force is expressed into this physical reality. And so we're saying that I have a soul that receives light from God, but it expresses itself through the experiences of these four worlds that I experience all the time. And the more I'm aware of these worlds, the more that I can connect to them. And so this is where everything comes together, right? And we're going to leave off on that. L'chaim again. Is it water? Is it coffee? We don't know. Got to live out here. Got to live out here. So this is the end. God took the Jewish people on Mount Sinai to receive information to connect their souls to the life force of Hashem. And that ability to connect themselves to the life, to the life force of Hashem gave them the responsibility to be a light to the nations. And being a light to the nations is the purpose of why we're in this world. So how do I become a light to the nations? You may not like it, but I'm just gonna tell you the truth. Why? Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna be judged by every single word that I said to you tonight. That's reality. So either I'm living it and I believe it or not. Because if I don't believe it and I'm saying it, and I'm not trying my best to live it, Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not a good place to be at. So the point is the saying I'm saying with like total like your mind. I'm saying to you that God gave us a technology to connect our souls, our, 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 the, the different aspect of our souls into his life force and thus creating this positive reality in a happy reality so the rest of the world could look at us as Jews as, as, as people B'nai Israel and look at us and say this is what we need to be like and then from that way the whole world wants to connect to God the whole world where do you think Islam, Christianity all these ideas come from it comes from our Torah inspired by our Torah okay they say that our prophets you know we're not, we're not even dealing with that right now what we're saying is that still comes from the inspiration of the Jew 
wrapping tefillin, putting on tzitzit, eating kosher food, keeping Shabbos. That woke up people. They're like, whoa, whoa, they're not even doing anything today. What's going on? Why? Because that different way of living woke up our neighbor, who happened to be maybe a non-Jewish person, and said, like, hey, what, what do you guys got over here? How are you guys staying sick when other people are suffering? How are you guys prospering when you don't really even have, we have all this discrimination against you? We want to learn your ways. And this is the spread of monotheism. And so the point is, is that Hashem gave us a Torah. And he gave us a Torah, and that Torah is a technology to connect our souls to this endless world so we can receive this light to fulfill ourselves, so we can experience an amazing life and a happy life, so we can inspire other nations to do the same thing in their way. That's it. That's being a light to the nations. And so when we say, re, re a, see the blessings that I put before you today. The blessing is, is the life that we have. The blessing is, is being able to say that I have the ability to connect to God in the highest level and fill my soul in a way that nothing material can do on its own. Material is good. Material is exciting. Material is fun. But at the end of the day, it can never fulfill our soul. Only the life force of Hashem can. And the way that we connect to the life forces of Hashem is through the Torah. It's through mitzvah. It's through caring about people. It's about sharing. It's about transforming ourselves. Leaving the world we came from and leaving and going into the world that Hashem wants us to be in. And becoming that person. And so my blessing to everybody tonight as we end this is that we don't spend our lives not being able to see what the real goal is. Right? That we don't spend our whole life pursuing other people's dreams and other living other people's expectations. And we could go forward in life and we could say, you know what? I live my truth. It doesn't matter how much money you made if you live in your truth. It doesn't matter how many people think you're successful if you live in your truth. It doesn't matter. All that matters is, is that you're connected to God. And if you're connected to God, your soul is filled. And then your soul is filled and it, it creates these worlds that you experience. And if you have, you, you live in this world that you feel good about, what else do you need? So my bracha to everybody is that you guys, like myself, all of us, we're all in this together, that we appreciate the life that we've been given. And we really look you know, deeply about our lives and everything that we experience and see that everything that we experience was from Hashem and it's to give us the ability to have the vessel to receive the light that our soul needs in order to project these perfect realities to live a happy, prosperous life to influence the other nations to follow in the way of God. Um, this Shabbat, uh, me and my wife, we were hosting in uh, Emmerich Refine. We were hosting a big Shabbos meal. There's going to be so many amazing people there and so many amazing people looking to get married and so if you're looking to get married and you're really cool or even if you're not really cool like you just really want to get married if that makes you really cool <laughs> come to this Shabbos meal and we're going to have an amazing time we're going to have more L'chaim 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 is it coffee is it water we don't know it's the tea but we're going to have a lot of L'chaims on the Shabbat and we're going to have great success and it's going to be fun so look out at JIC, shout out to um, Jody and Gavin and, and Stacy and Zipporah and all the amazing people who work with JIC to make this happen tonight. And we're going to share it a lot. But the point is, we got to see. Right.